Today's episode of the Island Archives podcast is brought to you by Old Road Rum. Old Road Rum is driven by a desire to celebrate the cultural history of St. Kitts and Nevis and is tropically aged for 12 years to present the pure expression of a well-crafted rum. Today on the Island Archive podcast, we will discuss a figure that was a true gem amongst a particularly stony time in Caribbean history. Maurice Bishop was born in Aruba in 1943 and moved to Grenada at the age of six, where he was a superb student, eventually earning a scholarship to get his secondary education at the Roman Catholic Presentation College. It was here that Bishop became enamored with the ideas of Caribbean nationalism stemming from the then recently defunct West Indian Federation, as well as the Cuban Revolution, as he grew to idolize Fidel Castro and Che Guevara. Bishop would later travel to England, where he earned a law degree from the University of London in 1966. During his time abroad, he took keen interest in socialism and visited many socialist states while studying the works of Marx, Lenin, and Stalin. Quite unsurprisingly, before returning to Grenada, he planned to create an organization capable of taking control of the political arena on the island and away from Premier Eric Gairi. In 1973, he created a socialist political party, the Movement for the Assemblies of the People, or MAP, and then joined forces with another political party in Grenada, the Joint Endeavor for Welfare, Education and Liberation, or Jewel Party. The new amalgamated party was called the New Jewel Movement, or NJM. I guess diamonds are forever. Now, this is where things get kind of crazy. In the same year of the NJM's creation, Bishop and other leaders were on their way to a business meeting in a rather extravagant fashion. Think parade for a second. When suddenly, they were stopped by the police and nine people were captured, arrested, beaten, and jailed. Bishop was sporting his iconic beard at the time, and the officers shaved off everyone's facial hair during the arrest, thus revealing Bishop's broken jaw. This became known as Bloody Sunday. A few months after, there was another protest where Bishop and Gary's supporters squared off. There were bottles, stones, and tear gas. Rupert Bishop, Maurice's father, was shot and killed in the tussle. This became known as Bloody Monday. In 1979, Eric Gehry's Mongoose Gang, a private militia, planned to murder the leaders of the NJM while Gehry was abroad. Learning of the dastardly plot, Bishop staged a revolution and took control of the government instead, forming the People's Revolutionary Government of Grenada, or PIG, and became Prime Minister. Bishop's core principles were women's rights, workers' rights, anti-racism, and equality for all, which, you know, sounds pretty good to me. Post-takeover, he transformed the social services system by greatly improving healthcare and youth affairs, drastically expanding women's rights, and revamping the education system. However, a power struggle ensued, and Bernard Cord, the PIG's deputy prime minister, seized power in a coup in 1983. Bishop was executed by firing squad in a bloody struggle, along with seven other cabinet ministers and an unknown number of civilians. Fearing that things would become more unstable, the OECS, along with Barbados and Jamaica, reached out to President Ronald Reagan of the US to help, and they soon after invaded Grenada with 7,000 troops in what is now known as Operation Urgent Fury. This, of course, is another story. Maurice Bishop was an ambitious political revolutionary who transformed the social service and basic human rights pillars in the region and remains a towering figure that is well worthy of mention in the Island Archive. The Island Archive podcast is a Pelican Media Group production and is brought to you by Old Road Rum. To hear more, log on to www.islandarchive.com or check us out on all streaming platforms.